Everyone knows that the flow of fluid through a cylinder is directly proportional to the fourth power of the radius and inversely proportional to the length, yet few can pronounce the eponymous name of this simple physics principle. Probably fewer still realise that this only really relates to laminar flow and not the turbulent flow that we see in blood vessels and IV lines. We've all therefore been taught the principle that short and thick does the trick when it comes to IV access, meaning a wide bore, short length intravenous cannula will deliver fluid significantly faster to your patient than a narrow diameter, long catheter. However, there are a wide range of large bore intravenous access devices on the market these days, and due to variations in things like catheter sizes and reported internal and external diameters, turbulent flow, differing viscosities of fluid and blood, and variations in the pressure uh, between programmable pumps, hand pump sets, rapid infuser devices, or the old art line pressure bag wrapped around your fluid bag, you can't really calculate flow rates using uh, that guy's little Poissel, Poissel, God, if that's even how you pronounce it, Poissel's law, I think it is. So look, despite searching far and wide, we've been unable to find a direct comparison of the most commonly used IV cannulas and catheters with regard to the speed at which fluid can be delivered through them. And this is information that I think would be really useful to know in the ED setting. So Will Sargent and I set up the large bore IV access device showdown. We collected different sized sheath introducers or cordis lines as the Americans like to call them, rapid infuser catheters or RIC lines, a multi-lumen central line and a range of standard large bore and small bore IV cannulas and connected them to a high pressure rapid infuser device and timed how long it took to pump a litre of saline through each line. Look, I realise this isn't a controlled scientific test, but I hope it gives you an idea of how fast you can get fluid through the lines you use at work. In the interest of time, I've trimmed the videos right down, but it still goes for a while, so if you want to get to the results, feel free to skip to the end. Also a quick declaration, I have no interest, financial or otherwise, in any of the lines we used in the test or in the companies that sell them. I do, however, uh, preferentially teach the insertion of the Arrow RIC lines on the ETM course, as I've simply been a fan of these lines in my clinical practice for many, many years. So here we go, this is the large bore IV access device showdown. We've got the uh, Ranger Rapid Infuser here, which is a pressure system. We've connected it just to a, a single uh, exit flow channel, We've taken the blood warmer off. We're going to run some fluid through and see how fast it goes. Oh, I'm just taking the cover off. I'll we'll just attach that to the lure lock. So let's just, for consistency's sake, show that's the arrow, eight and a half inch. It's open, it's connected to the side port, the line's primed. All right, we're just going to get this stopwatch out. We'll just run through stopwatches just in case. So the pressure on. Uh, and that's our opening port. I'll go three, two, one. Yep. Okay, three, two, one. Jeez, that's boring. Yeah. So we'll just show the flow. Uh, that's, that's really oozing. That's really oozing. Just hold it up a bit, will So you can see that's uh, that's a little bit good. It's like a garden. That's really pouring out there. Hang on, let's get the last drop. There. Yeah. Oh, I got 105. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, right. so next up is the Arrow 6 French. Uh, so this one's a little bit narrower diameter. Three, two, one. Yeah. Cool. That's about 210. Alright, so we're going. So, what have we got there, Will? So, we have the brick line rapid infuser catheter exchange set, 8.5 French at 6.4 centimetres long. So, this is the short, well, it's the same diameter as the first um, arrow uh, sheath introducer. The cordis, as the Americans call it, but much shorter. So we'll see if short and thick really does the trick. Okay, that that's pretty loud. That's pretty much hosing out there. 
screen versus flood. That's a trickle. Thousand million drops. Back. Four, yeah. 46. Yeah. 46 seconds. The Rick is the winner. Rick beats Sheaf. <laughs> Okay, so next up we managed to find, we didn't have one initially, we've gone and found a seven French recline. So this is a bit narrower and slightly shorter than the eight and a half French. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any difference. Yeah, pretty good. Still pretty good. So is that the same length then? No, good. it's slightly shorter. It is slightly shorter. So five centimetres versus six point four. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to have the diameter the length? So good. So we've got an arrow, it's a four lumen central line. So it says eight and a half French is the total diameter of the line, but it's got four lumens running through it. And we're gonna use the biggest one, which is a 14 gauge. So that is the gray port. So that's the widest line, the grey port on the 14 gauge, quadruple lumen, four lumen central line, which is, I think, 20 centimetres long, and it will come out of one of the medial ports. It's not the distal one. So go, all right. Three, two, one, go. Ooh. It's significantly oh, slower already, you can tell. Hyper speed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're pretty close. It's <laughs> still coming out as a continuous play. I think we've made the point. Central lines are no good for rapid infusion. Come on, oh. almost there. Oh, let's yeah. get up. This is ridiculous. Go right, five, five, 520. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so next is the uh, 14 gauge Angia Cat IV. So it's a big long 14 gauge, which is. Uh, says. 133 millimetres, 13.3 centimetres long. Looks a bit longer. No, that's just the length of the actual catheter bit. No. So that's, that's a 14 gauge, it's just very long. Some people use these for decompressing chests and things, but. Have you uh, used them? Not for IV fluid. Yeah, I've used them in like arrests to put in a jugular, but I found them, yeah. they're just flexible. Like, you have to make a nick first in the skin, otherwise it bends a lot to you. Through, yeah, and they, they don't have the kink proofing that the Rick lines mm. have, so we'll give it a go in three, two, one, go. Check it out. Not too bad. So we just did the uh, 14 gauge, and I said, well, um, mm. Andrew Cap, two minutes ten. The one thing we're finding running this, running this test is that the more bags you try and load into a rapid infuser, they're actually really <laughs> hard to get the line into the bag. There's a little round gripper on the port there trying to squeeze it in. So, newfound sympathy for the nurses when you're uh, telling them, hurry up, get the next bag in. It's, so like, next it's the equivalent of gamekeeper's thumb. Yeah. <laughs> rapid infuser thumb. After about four or five bags, you've got no grip strength to jam the uh, ports in. So let's start with the 14 gauge and uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, good. Pretty much there. So about a minute 30. Mm -hmm. Now we're going 16 gauge standard IV, uh, 16 gauge 32 millimeters. Yep. That'll do. It's called 220. Okay, next up, 18 gauge IV. The green. The green IV. So, there we go. Of course, it's going to be a bit slower. It'll be interesting to see how much slower. Okay, 18 gauge IV in 
three, two, one, go. And the 20 gauge IV, as expected, slowest at, what was it, Will? 6, 647. 647 loser So there you have it the eight and a half French Rick line is the clear winner. And I hope that gives you a much clearer idea of the relative speeds at which fluid can be delivered through various IV cannulas and catheters found in most EDs. If you don't have Rick lines in your ED, I strongly suggest you get them. They are quick and easy to insert and can be used to gain rapid, large bore peripheral access in shut down shocked patients. And the wire that comes in the kit that is used to selding of the dilator and catheter into the vein can be inserted through a line as small as a 20 gauge or pink IV. So don't keep pranging your shut down collapsed veins with multiple stabs with 14 gauge and 16 gauge IVs. Just grab a 20, feed the wire through it and upsize to a recline for the fastest way to deliver IV fluid in recess. If you want to learn how to insert a recline, you can also check out our video on edprocedures.com and I'll put links to it in the show notes below. Big thanks to Will Sargent up in Darwin for helping to set up and run the test. And remember, if there's an ED procedure you need assistance with, feel free to drop us a line and we'll see if we can help.